Hello, hi, 花莲的朋友 ，Welcome， 我是陈世俊。The way that I started learning how to program really was just with, you know, with just one computer, and really anywhere in the world you could buy this computer. You can, you know, all you, all you need is really computer. But I think you also need、um, a little bit of encouragement,、um, or at the very least, no distraction from. The the parents.、Uh, so I think it's important if your kid, if your kids enjoy something to do with computers, with programming, that's the easiest. Give them the time to do it. Let them do it. Don't tell them、uh, you only have so much time. If they're really enjoying, if they're really passionate about learning how to build something, then I think the most important thing as parents is to let them do it.、Uh, don't force it upon. Them to have to do this,、uh, and so for me it was when I was in fourth grade and I had、uh, I had my own computer, and it was I think in some ways、uh, I had you know the the weekends Saturdays and Sundays to myself. I mean programming you can think of it as work, but I think that if you really want to enjoy it, you must think of it as a game, right?、Uh, and I think the The big difference between programming and、uh, and engineering and starting companies is it's really rewarding if you have an idea, if you are creative with your ideas. It's very rewarding because you can think of something to do, think of an idea,、uh, think about a, fu- a feature inside a an idea, and you can by yourself. You can start getting a keyboard, getting a computer, and start programming, starting to build this. And you can see what you build, and you can use what you build immediately. You can test it while it's being built.、Uh, you know if there is anything broken, it's your own fault. If there is anything that works, it's your own fault. You are 100% responsible for this program. You know this this feature. So. Uh, from a very early age, you get, you build. I think、uh, you, you build and you encourage yourself to gain the confidence to be able to,、uh, to be able to just sit down and then once you have an idea, you can build it and you can share it, you can show it to other people, and even all the way until the time when you go to high school, college, and even when you move to Silicon Valley when you start your own company. You know that if you have a good idea, if you have, if you have any idea, the best way to be able to test it is to be able to just sit down and build it and then share it. This is a、uh, very different from a lot of other you know, professions where you always need to. And maybe it takes a lot more time from an idea to be able to build an actual product. And this is one reward. For being in the、uh, in this sort of software in this、uh, engineering mode, but once you have the once you have the passion to do it, and once you have the ability for your for you know、um, your time, your schedule to be able to allow you to be able to build it, then it's only your creativity that you need to be able to build whatever it is that you want. For example, you have many engineers or computer scientists that graduate with 4.0 GPAs, right?、Um, and they interview very well with all the questions that you ask them.、Uh, but when they start working, you see that they're not as productive in the real world as someone that may not have gotten the best. Scores, maybe not the best GPAs. I think there's a difference between being able to test well,、uh, being able to、uh, being able to show on paper that you know the you know you have the knowledge to be able to do something. 
but that becomes a you know uh, maybe a person that works from Monday to Friday and that's it once the the once office hours are over then you stop thinking about the product you stop thinking about uh, how to improve the product I think in the in the domain of startups and entrepreneurs you need to be thinking always about how to better how to improve your product and so uh, the only way the only real way is that you have to really love and be passionate about what you're doing yeah you have to you know some of the best ideas I think people some of the best ideas coming from Silicon Valley is uh, you know when you're not actually sitting at your desk it's when you're maybe when your brain is completely fresh and you're taking your morning shower that's when the actual ideas come and some uh, you know maybe on the weekends when you're going to sleep that's when the ideas come but you need to be in this mindset always about whatever you see in the real world whatever you're doing right now is there a way to apply what you're doing and then be able to translate it into something that you're working on and I think that's that's the real difference between uh, being able to just work and just just go to the office because of your salary versus going to the office because this is something that you really love doing. Yeah, well, I think it was uh, fairly early on, right? I think uh, this was in, this was still in fourth grade when I first, it was the, you know, it was really the first time that I started playing with computers. And this is before, uh, you know, this is before Windows. This is before a lot of what we're used to now. Um, and in fourth grade, I remember having one of these, uh, you know, it was still an Apple computer, Apple II computer at the time. Uh, and, you know, it was, it was really being able to, at that early age, to just be able to build um, it was a, a little bit of a, a small, a, I wouldn't even call it a game, but it's just a, a little bit of a, an American flag that you can move left to right and you can play uh, uh, music, you can play instruments to it. But, you know, uh, it's one thing to be able to say that now because now you can build that very, very quickly. But back then, you had to know exactly the frequency of the sound to be able to play. You have to be able to do things to be able to read the keyboard controls when it's pushed on, when it's pushed off, and what to do on the map. Uh, but that's what I mean is that it really only took two days, a Saturday and Sunday, to be able to build this. And at the end of Sunday, here's something that you know, didn't exist two days ago. And all it was was just an idea in your head, maybe 15 hours, uh, and all of a sudden you can show somebody this is what you've built. And it, it continues to be like this way over and over and again. And that's, I think, how you grow the, the confidence to one day say, if you do have an idea, are you willing to put your, you know, uh, are you willing to put your time, are you willing to put your money, and sacrifice a lot of things to be able to focus 100% on this startup. It's more of a, back then, you know, in the early 90s, they didn't have computer teachers uh, at the time, but this was a, yeah, I think this is probably a sign of a good teacher was that once they see a student that is really passionate about something to be able to to encourage it even though it's outside the boundaries of an official class to be able to just encourage that and I think as parents too is that you know not to force but to encourage if you see your kids doing something that they like being able to find it, don't force them to do something else, rather try to encourage them to be able to do it more. Well, I mean, I takes, it takes, I think it takes, uh, as a parent now, it, oddly, ironically, it takes courage to not take action, it takes, courage to be able to be standing always one step back and to allow the kids to
play with the computer, to play with the iPad, hoping that they will then themselves want to build, want to create, want to program something. Uh, it's, it's more practical, maybe it's easier just to say, okay, you know, kids, right now it's 3.30, we have to go to swimming class. You know, it's 4.30, we have to go to math class. Of course, I think that that's necessary, but at certain times, it also says, okay, here's three hours, four hours of your own time, and let them, let them be able to explore. Of course, you know, if, if they're playing with, uh, you know, if they're play, playing something with an iPad that's controlling a, a robot that, you know, they're programming, then it's not really playing, right? I mean, it's, uh, it's in a way trying to create uh, them to be passionate about something that eventually is is learning something at every time but i think you need to make it so the kids think that they're playing for their own personal enjoyment even though they're learning something every minute when they're doing it yeah i think that that's still important i think it's more and more important especially more and more parents now know that a lot of the the products that they use more and more every day it used to be 30 minutes a day now I think it's on average about four hours a day that they're using these products and uh, and then you see the top five most uh, valued companies in the world are all in technology right the most innovative products that are changing the quickest is in technology and when they look at how this technology is built then they know that when you start at an early age, it is a lot about, you know, uh, it's a lot about science and technology and it's learning programming languages. Uh, and I think that it's, it's something that is gradually moving more and more. So kids, you know, I thought fourth grade was a pretty early time back then to be able to just have my own computer and start to programming, uh, start to program. But you have now kids that you're not formally programming, like you're not writing, you know, uh, line and line and line of code, but there are applications out there, for example, with uh, MIT Media Labs Scratch. with Scratch. I think that's a great example of kids that are used to the iPad. It's hard to tell them, I'll just give you a keyboard and you just have to type, and then after four hours, here's something that you can see. I think uh, maybe with the shorter attention span of kids these days, you need to be able to, here's some things that you can drag and drop uh, and you can see immediately within two, three minutes, you can see what you're doing. But the same things, the same lessons are still learned. Things about things that are key to how to write a larger program. It's still the same thing within Scratch as it is in harder programming languages that are actually used in places like Google and Facebook. And the most important thing for even for my for my own kids right is uh is i think for them just to be curious about something and to be passionate about something and to be able to give them the time and energy to be able to pursue that passion of course i can talk to my kids more about programming and engineering and i think that uh, you usually see that kids follow a lot of the same path a lot of the same track as parents it's because over dinner over lunch it's something that we're always talking about but as a parent i think that you know let the kids try a lot of things and you'll you will naturally see what they're going to be what they really like doing and i think it's important for the kids and also for just the sanity of the parents to be able to see their kids be really, really happy about what they're doing. And I think that the most important thing is that even when you don't force them to do something, instead of you know picking up the iPad to play a game, they will naturally do something that they like instead. And I think that's the most important thing is to, to be able to encourage that kind of curiosity in your kids. Um, well, yeah, I mean, I think uh, the, it, it comes back to what was in my household when I was being raised. Um, I think that 
parents often think that they need to compress into one evening, one day, or one weekend as many activities as possible. Right? Uh, but I think some of it is also, you know, you light a spark and you let the kids be able to take some of their own steps by themselves, they're going to make mistakes, so it's okay. I think it's to okay to let them make the mistakes and let them find out what their mistakes are and correct it themselves. I think instead of forcing kind of top-down exactly where you're going to be doing every minute of the entire weekend, I think it's good just to be able to let them be, let them be kids, let them be free, uh, and then, you know, uh, you will naturally see kids are curious people. They're, they're going to have some things that they're going to be passionately tied to, but if you don't let them have that, that potential, if you don't let them have that space and time to be able to explore that, then, then you know, you're not going to be happy, and, and I think the worst case is the kids won't be happy. Uh, you know, as I was saying, I think it's harder to be a parent that uh, is, even when the kids are not doing what you think they should be doing, to not scold them. You know, uh, I, I think that's the, the hard part. I think people think that they're being good parents always. If they're always busy, they're always doing something. Of course, you don't want them to play four hours of an iPad. But if they are doing something that you don't think they should be doing, but if they're really enjoying it, then, you know, let them do it for a while. Maybe cancel the swim coach, maybe can cancel something just so they could really pursue something they really like. And a few weeks, a few months of it, you're going to see if it becomes something, if, if it blossoms up to be something that they truly, truly want to pursue.